So now we are going to understand the concept of unbiased estimation using Python and here we will consider different distributions that we have studied so far one by one and we are going to begin with the normal distribution. So let us first import the necessary libraries import numpy as np so as you all are familiar with these libraries by now. So now we are going to import from scipy dot stats module we are going to import norm because we are going to work with the normal distribution. Once we have imported this now we want to ensure that the same sample is produced every time so we will write np dot random dot seed zero over here. So this line basically sets the random seeds to ensure reproducibility okay you can so here i have set it to zero this is an arbitrary number over here you can choose any non negative integer okay next we are going to set the true parameters of the normal distribution so let us define true underscore mu suppose this is 5 and true sigma as Two. So basically we are drawing a random sample from normal distribution with mean 5 and variance 4. So now let us generate a random sample. So let me just write a comment generate a random sample from normal distribution. So for this first of all we have to mention the sample size so sample let us take it as 100 and then we are going to generate a random sample and it will be stored in this data sample variable data sample so for this we are going to use norm dot rv this is a function which is provided by your scipy dot stats not norm module so rv s and then this is used for generating random numbers from normal distribution okay so here we will specify loc is basically your true mu that we have defined earlier as 5 then scale would be your true sigma true sigma and the size would be the same as the sample size if you recall these steps we have performed in the last week's lecture also because we were drawing there also we were drawing a random sample from a specified distribution and then we saw what will be the maximum likelihood estimate or the method of moment estimator. So here we are going to see the concept of unbiased estimation that the estimator that you have drawn is it unbiased or not okay. So after specifying this what happens is that this particular line over here this data sample variable this will contain an array of 100 random data points which are sampled from your normal distribution with the specified mean and standard deviation that we have defined over here okay now we are going to calculate the moments because in normal distribution we need sample mean and sample variance so let us first find those so sample underscore mean this one would be again taken from your numpy library so we will use np.mean function so here we would write data sample which is basically storing the 100 random numbers that we have generated and your sample variance would be again obtained using np.var function from numpy so again we can write this in addition let us find the length of the data set although we know it is 100 only so just to assign it so we have this okay so sample mean will contain this line over here would contain the average of the data that we have obtained here this would can, can contain the sample variance and this finally would calculate the sample size now you know that for method of moment estimator or your MLE in both the cases your estimators were same 
right mu hat was x bar that is the sample mean and sigma hat square that came out as n minus 1 over n times s square that is sample variance so let us write that so estimated mu was same as the sample mean that we have calculated and estimated sigma squared we can write this one would be n minus 1 divided by n into your sample variance okay so estimated mu basically would contain your sample mean and this estimated sigma squared would be n minus 1 over n times sample variance next we are going to generate multiple samples and estimate the parameters in order to find the expected values because in an unbiased estimation we need expected value of x bar to be mu right or expected value of sample variance so for that we need to generate multiple samples so let me just write this comment generate multiple samples and estimate parameters so let us take that the number of samples that we would be taking is 1000 okay you can adjust this number as needed and then estimated mu values this would be np dot zeros num sample so let me explain to you what is happening over here so this line basically initializes an array called this estimated mu values with the length equal to the number of samples that we have taken as 1000 okay so it will be used to store the estimated means for each of the generated samples okay initially it is assigned zero so all the elements of this array are set to zero initially and then it will store the estimated means for each of the generated samples okay so in this case we have taken it to be 1000 so one array is this another array would be estimated sigma squared values So again here you will use np dot zeros. So this, this this won't be an e over here. np dot zeros, and here also we would write num underscore samples. Okay. So here again, initially all the elements of this array would be zero, and then it would store the estimated variances for each of the generated sample okay now we need to initiate a for loop that would generate multiple samples and estimate the parameters okay so let me write over here for i in range num samples that we have already defined so 1000 over here okay so we are going to initiate a for loop that would iterate these many number of times okay that is 1000 now the data sample would be again your norm from normal distribution we are going to generate so location would be your true mu and scale would be true sigma size would be your sample size okay next we will have the sample mean so sample mean would be using np dot mean function from here and here we will write data sample okay 
so it will calculate the sample mean of that particular sample that is being selected over here for that sample it will calculate the sample mean and it would also calculate your sample variance so we'll use np.var over here so here also data sample yes and we will also specify the ddof because we want it to work with your sample variance okay next we would write estimated underscore mu values this would be sample mean so here basically sample mean is the sam calculated sample mean for the current sample okay so you have drawn first of all you have drawn a random sample from this normal distribution you have calculated mean and variance now once for that mean you have the one the mean that you have calculated here it will be assigned to this estimated mu values to the ith element okay because for that particular i it that mean would be assigned to the ith element of this array okay it will store basically the estimate of the mean for the current sample and likewise we will use estimated sigma squared values here also we would write i so this one would be so i can just copy this from here okay so whatever sample variance has been calculated for the sample here it will perform this step and then it will be stored in this it will be assigned to the ith element of this array so this loop basically what overall what it is doing is it is generating multiple random samples over here it is calculating the mean and variance for each of them and then it is assigning or these estimates are basically used to find the expected values okay so these will be assigned to these corresponding arrays and then now we are going to calculate the expected values that is the expectation calculate the expected values so expected we have estimated mu values already right so estimated mu we have written so let's just we can write from here so this one would be obtained using this function np.mean from numpy library and here we would have estimated mu values okay so it calculates the average over here okay so np dot mean it will calculate the average of the values in this particular array okay and this array which you have estimated expected estimated mu this is an array that contains the estimated means for each of the sample so you have obtained this likewise we will obtain expected this also expected underscore this and again we will use np dot mean of this because we are calculating expected values expectation that is on an average so again we will use np dot mean only okay now we can print your the expect or expected values and your true mu's so let us just print finally so print if expected expected so let us use the same notation that we have used here so expected value i can write expected value of for mean so 
so here we will use this one okay and we will also print the true mu that we had initially so true mu so let me true mu would be again obtained using this true mu that we have already assigned okay so it is going to print your expected value right expected value of x bar that is going to come over here and your mu initial mu that we had that was 5 it is also going to print it okay so we have used this f string over here so first of all these would be evaluated and then substituted for printing next likewise we could have print f we will write expected expected mu value i would write expected sigma value okay and next would be your true sigma square so this one would store your true sigma that we have defined initially so we are squaring it up because we are now dealing with the variance not the standard deviation okay yes so mu was your 5 initially and your expected value when you are taking the sample mean as the estimator for your population mean and then for that you have calculated expected value of x bar then what you have obtained is 5.002 so you can see that how close it is and your expected sigma value it is 3.936 as compared to 4 that you have obtained here okay so you see that these are your unbiased estimators because they are very much close to your population parameter so on an average your expected values of the sample mean and the sample variances come out as same as your corresponding population mean and population variance If you change over here, let us make it 2000 and then we rerun this. So, let us see. So, it, it will get closer to this. So, it is 5.003 also. Okay. So, this was for your normal distribution. Okay. So, let me just write it. So, the next distribution which we are going to study is your uniform distribution. Okay. So, for uniform distribution, what are the libraries that we need? So, we have already imported NumPy. So, we can just rewrite it, no problem in that. Import NumPy as NP and then from your scipy.stats import uniform because we are going to deal with the uniform distribution. We will set the random seed. So, np dot random dot seed. So, you all know the role of this particular step. And we are going to assign the true parameter of the uniform distribution. So, true parameter in this case. So, let us take it as theta as 8. So, basically we are dealing with uniform 0, 8. Okay. Now we are going to generate a sample from this. So, sample size as 100. Again, the data sample, we are defining it. This data sample would contain uniform 
dot rvs so location 0 okay scale would be theta from uniform 0 8 and size would be your sample size okay. now you can calculate the sample moments if we use here your method of moments so in that case your for your uniform uh, estimator was point estimator in case of the uniform distribution was twice of the sample mean so let us see if the method of moment estimator is your unbiased estimator or not so for that we need to first of all calculate the sample mean okay so sample mean would be np dot mean function we will use and we will write data sample over here okay and your estimated theta over here would be twice of the sample mean so now we will generate multiple samples from here so this is how you generate a single sample if you have to generate multiple samples from uniform you have to define first of all the number of samples that you would be drawing so num samples suppose it is 1000 or you can see it as 10000 okay and your estimated theta values for this we are initializing an array whose all the elements are zero initially okay and it will have these many number of elements that is num samples 10,000 elements would be there after this we are going to initiate the for loop for i in range of num samples so data sample maybe i can just copy these from here only because this is for single sample okay so we have obtained for single sample now we are just showing it to you for 10,000 such samples because we need to calculate the expected value so for i in range num samples data samples uniform dot rvs location and size are specified so this is there and estimated theta values here it would be twice of the sample mean okay so to the ith element of the array this this mean multiplied by 2 would be stored in at this particular position ith position okay now you can calculate the expected value for that so expected estimated theta would be np dot mean of this because we have to calculate the mean expected value that means you can use uh, these variables for storing you can name them as per your need or whatever you are comfortable in it's not necessary that you have to use the same terms that i am using over here now finally we can print it so let us print f true theta would be the theta value that we have specified and my estimated value let us see what it is so let me just for f expected estimate expect theta okay so this is true theta was 8 and expected theta 
that we have obtained that is theta hat twice of the sample mean it is 7.996 so maybe we can do a bit of formatting over here we can take up till four decimal places only so you will have 8.0020 okay so you can see that all these are your unbiased estimators So we have we are done with your normal distribution, uniform distribution. So these were your continuous cases. We can now move on to the Poisson distribution and Bernoulli, which are your discrete cases. So let me write for Poisson distribution. So import numpy as np. So we need an numpy library in all the cases and from scipy.stats you need to import whatever distribution you are working with. Okay, So as in case of normal distribution we imported norm and for uniform we imported uniform and now in this case we will be importing poison. Okay. So np.random.seed this one would be let us set it to zero poison has again a single parameter so true lambda let it be that is lambda is three in this case if you generate a random sample then it would be simple you can see how to generate a random sample generate a random sample from here so the sample size let us take as 100 and we are going to define this variable data sample that would store basically random variables would be generated from your poisson distribution with mean mu is given as the true mu that we true lambda that we have defined and the size would be the sample size okay now you could again calculate the sample mean because sample mean here np dot mean poison distribution lambda hat for sample mean so we calculate that next your estimated one was also estimated lambda we can save as the sample mean only or maybe directly you could have written here estimated lambda and sample mean are same okay so now you will generate multiple samples okay from poison so for this again we will define how many samples do we need so let me just write 10,000 over here and then we could write here estimated one okay so estimated lambda values so for this we are initializing an array over here and so it will be numbs on these many number these many elements it would store Now, as we have seen for generating multiple samples, we need to initiate a for loop for i in range num underscore samples. So, we can use this from here. Okay, so data sample would store your random sample that is generated from your poison distribution with parameter lambda that is 3 over here. Sample size is given and sample mean would be calculated for each of these sample. The sample that is drawn, you would calculate the mean and then here let me just write 
estimated lambda values. So here to the ith position in that array we would assign your sample mean. Okay. So once it is done you will have an array for estimated lambda values and we can calculate the average of those estimate no wait. so let me just write expected because we are using we are going to find now the expected value of this so np dot mean okay so if we just print this value over here true lambda is not defined lambda sorry here it should be true and here also it would be the spelling of true was incorrect sorry for that Yes, yeah, so it comes out as 3.001831. So let me, so you could also restrict it to four decimal places if you want that. So you can see that these are all your unbiased estimators, and this is how your unbiased estimation works. It's a nice property for any estimator to have, and in the long run, also when you go to study about your statistical inference and you will see various properties, so you'll see that this one being the simplest one also and it is very useful we will end up with this unbiased property only obviously there will be more to it because at the end we get uniformly minimum variance unbiased estimator so among the class of the unbiased estimators you are going to find the estimator which is having the minimum variance uniformly okay so as we are not covering those topics i'm just giving you a hint of what is your unbiased estimation and how does it work so this is for poison so likewise you can do for your um, bernoulli distribution also it is in the same way you are going to import the numpy library and from scipy.stats you will import here you would be importing bernoulli okay you will define your true parameter what it is you will generate a random sample for this and then finally you will generate multiple samples and calculate the expected value so if you want i can quickly write it for bernoulli distribution so let me just import numpy as np and we are going to import from scipy dot stats import bernoulli okay so np dot random dot seed would be zero and then true p we would assign as 0.3 okay let us suppose this is the probability of success for us if you generate a simple single samples of size 100 then you can draw a sample from Bernoulli Bernoulli dot RVS so we would write because Bernoulli also has a single parameter so we just need to specify that okay the sample mean would be what in this case we would use the np dot mean function And your estimated P would be the sample mean. Okay. So these are the steps, these same steps we are performing for Bernoulli. Okay. So now we can generate multiple samples. For that, we will again be using this num samples. So let us number of samples that we need let us take it as 1000 10000 suppose and 
estimated p values so we are initializing an array so np dot zeros we will write num underscore samples okay and for i in range for i in range we are initiating a for loop that will go through each of these samples it will draw a bernoulli sample okay with parameter p from each of these and for each sample it will be calculating the sample mean and finally it would be assigned to the ith element in this particular array okay finally you would calculate your expected value so what would be the expected value so let me just write expected value would be np dot mean of the estimated p values and let us see what is this expected value okay so it should be a small letter b over here okay that is why error was coming so now it is 0.300519 okay so you can see that these are all your unbiased estimators so we have looked at two cases from continuous distributions that is uniform and normal and two from your discrete families like bernoulli and your poisson distribution okay